In this video, we're going to start taking a look at one very important concept, which is the frequency response to the system. There are several tools that we can use to look at the frequency response of a system, and the first of which is the, the Nyquist plot. The Nyquist plot is formed in the following way. First, we would find the closed loop transfer function of our system, where if this is a series compensator and unity feedback, we know the closed loop transfer function is C of S times G of S over 1 plus C of S times G of S. And we know that uh, from doing our root locus analysis that the uh, and our stability analysis that the denominator of the transfer function tells us about stability. And we would then say that we need the characteristic equation 1 plus C of S times G of S of this closed loop system to equal 0. And in root locus analysis, we said let that be 1 plus K, some constant we're going to vary, times L of S. And L of S is whatever's left over after we've factored out the, the gain that we want to vary. Many times, when this is just G of S, then we're talking about the open loop system here by itself, and we're varying the loop gain of the system. Secondly, we would take, uh, we would let K be some constant. This is for the Nyquist. And then we would let s equal j omega. Then we would vary omega from 0 to infinity. And then step, step 3, we would plot the complex number uh, k times l of j omega for omega equal 0 to infinity. And then finally, we would notice that the if we let um, uh, omega go from minus infinity to zero, then L of minus j omega is just the conjugate of L of j omega. So for omega equal minus infinity to zero, it's just simply mirrored in the real axis. And then finally, we would notice that the curve generated from all this uh, calculation uh, gives the magnitude and phase of k of l of j omega at each point of omega. This is what, going through this process is known as generating the Nyquist plot or the polar plot. This is also called the polar uh, plot. And obviously, it's because we're looking at the polar coordinates, the magnitude and phase angle of k times l of j omega. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how we would do this in MATLAB. Let's go ahead and take a look at the commands we would use in MATLAB to generate a Nyquist plot. First, we can always define a transfer function, say l as, uh, let's use the example of a DC motor. So we define the transfer function. And then we use Nyquist, and we pass in the transfer function L. And it generates a figure that looks like this. Now, it may not be clear that this is what you would get if you calculate the magnitude and phase of this particular transfer function. But notice that if we were to look at the magnitude of this, we see that as omega gets small, and we can, we can actually uh, put a, a point here, the... Um, Give us the, the magnitude and the frequency. Notice the frequency number here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as this curve goes off to infinity. We would see that, and I haven't calculated it here, but this is uh, going to be like 1 over omega here. And as omega gets small, this transfer function's magnitude is going to go off to infinity. And because it's uh, S squared, it's going to go off to either plus or minus infinity, depending on whether or not omega is positive or negative. And we see that here. Uh, we could look at another example. 
let's use, say, the, the mass on a spring with some damping. Uh, say like that. Then we type Nyquist L, and we get uh, what's known as a, a, a cusp or a cardio, sorry, a cardioid. Um, looks like a heart. And uh, the Nyquist stability criterion uh, tells us that, and we're going to look at this in class, that as long as I have no encirclements of minus one, then the system is stable. In other words, uh, this system never completely circles. The system never completely circles minus one or goes around it and circles it. And we see that no matter the, the amount of gain I put in here, it's never going to encircle it. If I go ahead and let's hold this over here. Let's let L equal five. Now let's go with 10 times L. And so we just added more gain to the system. And now I plot that Nyquist. Go back to the figure. We can see that no matter, and we can take it a limit on this, but if we zoom in, this is the green line here represents 10 times the transfer function. That no matter how much gain I add, this line is going to just keep going out. And it gets real close to the real axis, but it never goes exactly there. So we can. this is a way to verify that no matter how much gain I put into this system, the closed loop system is going to be stable. And we know that from looking at stability analysis or the root locus. If we look at the root locus of this particular transfer function, then we can verify that, yes, indeed, no matter how much gain I put into the system, the system remains stable. And we, we knew that from before.